half a mile north of Watt Standwell, on the A6 in the county of Derbyshire, we leave its district of Amber Valley to enter the Derbyshire Dales. Here we reach the southeastern fringes of the Peak District. This is Cromford, a charming village with much to surprise and please the visitor. It is well known through its connection with Sir Richard Arkwright, who established a water-powered cotton spinning mill here in the 18th century. Cromford is a sturdy stone-built village, cut through by the busy Cromford Hill Road and the A6. Some of the cottages and farm buildings predate Arkwright's time, but a large part of the village was built to house the mill workers. Cromford is set in a valley, surrounded by wooded hills and cliffs, bordered by the River Derwent to the east and vast quarries to the west. Cromford Pond was constructed by Arkwright to store water for the cotton mills. The old water wheel dates from the middle of the 19th century, where locally mined barites were ground to make powder used in the manufacture of paint. The wheel still turns occasionally, but does not drive any machinery. The mill buildings are now occupied by home products. Well, being here in the lovely village of Cromford, I am very close to home now, so I'm looking forward to doing a very local walk today. On the other side of the pond, I walked along Scarvin, once a lead mining settlement. On the promenade is the Scarvin War Memorial, with the popular bookshop Scarthin Books behind it. Passing the post office, I came to the Boat Inn, dating from 1772. It's a great pub, which I have had the pleasure of visiting many times before now. From the marketplace, I headed back to the A6 and crossed over beside the excellent Tor Cafe to reach my next point of interest. Cromford Mill is the world's first water-powered cotton spinning mill developed by Richard Arkwright in 1771. The mill structure is classified as a Grade 1 listed building. It is now the centrepiece of the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site and is a multi-use visitor centre with shops, galleries, restaurants and cafes. Beyond the mills, I walked down to the Derwent, where I could see Willersley Castle dominating the hill on the east side of the river. In the late 18th century, Richard Arkwright built this country mansion for himself, which stands in 60 acres of grounds, and in recent years operated as a hotel that was permanently closed and listed for sale earlier this year. St Mary's Church was also built by Richard Arkwright between 1792 and 1797. Just past here is Cromford Bridge crossing the Derwent. The bridge was erected in the 15th century and has three arches. The Cromford Canal, beginning here at Cromford Wharf, 
was built to service the mills. It is now in disuse, but has been designated a site of special scientific interest. Right, the walk now begins. Opposite the mills, I took a path leading back to the A6, crossing over to follow intake lane. After a short ascent, I took the first footpath on the right to climb a stile, from where I started to get some great views. Many years ago, I do remember, just before I moved to Derbyshire, I came up here four times. Now that was because I had four different interviews for four jobs, and it was the fourth time lucky. But each time I traveled up here those four times, I took the same route. I drove up the A38 to Derby, and then from there, I took the A6 through Duffield and onwards up here. And I always remember as I was driving up the A6, and when I got to Cromford, I thought to myself, yeah, I've reached the Peak District now. remained level just above Cromford, but soon enough I went through a gate to reach houses on Barnwell Lane. Turning right down the hill, I then followed Beadhouse Lane, which was a delightful walk between the fields and houses. Coming out onto Cromford Hill, I walked down the steep road back into the centre of Cromford. Making my way back to the A6 again, I turned left to follow it northwards. Masson Mills now. Arkwright built Masson Mill in 1783, which again forms part of the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site. This was the only Arkwright mill to use the Derwent, a power source ten times greater than Cromford Mills. The Masson Mills site now houses a shopping village, a restaurant, conference facilities and a textile museum with historic working machinery. However, sadly, just six weeks after I did this walk, I learned that Masson Mills Shopping Village had closed its doors for good after 21 years of trading. Continuing up the A6, I was looking forward to where I was about to visit next. OK, I'm now in Matlock Bath. <music> Descending 
Developed as one of the country's first tourist destinations, Matlock Bath is set in a beautiful gorge on this stretch of the River Derwent, with attractive riverside gardens, wooded hillsides and rocky limestone crags. The Grand's Pavilion houses a tourist point and the Peak District Lead Mining Museum. For youngsters, the theme park of Gulliver's Kingdom offers hours of fun and enjoyment. There is also an aquarium and a photographic museum in the village. Matlock Bath has been a popular tourist destination since the late 17th century when the spa waters were discovered. Its heyday was in Victorian times when it became known as Little Switzerland by the poet Lord Byron. Matlock Bath is perhaps most famous for the many hundreds of motorcyclists that congregate in the village every Sunday during the summer. Well, there's quite a lot of motorbikes here today, but if you were to come here on a Sunday, you wouldn't see any cars for motorbikes. The Matlock Bath illuminations are a popular feature from September to the end of October, when the riverside is decorated and the cliffs floodlit to create a magical scene of colour. At weekends, there are parades of decorated boats, entertainments, and on certain dates, firework displays. I looked above to see the cable cars, which dramatically cross the Derwent Valley. Visitors can ride in the cable cars up to the Heights of Abraham, a 60-acre woodland estate first opened to the public in 1787 as a savage garden. It was constructed around Masson Hill overlooking Matlock Bath. crossed over the Jubilee Bridge to the east bank of the Derwent, where I took a stroll along Lover's Walks. During my life in Derbyshire, I was living with a long-term partner for a few years. And quite often we'd spend a Sunday morning in Matlock Bath. We'd come here first thing, and we just spend an hour or two in the amusement arcades because we both love the amusement arcades. She used to enjoy some of the sort of one-armed bandit machines, um, but I love the grab a cuddly toy machines because I actually got to be quite good on them. And between us, my partner and I had a huge box full of cuddly toys that we'd picked from going to the amusement arcades in Matlock Bath. I think she still got them actually. After we went our separate ways, she took them all with her, so she still got them somewhere, I think. Crossing back over the river, I walked through the lovely riverside gardens. I just adore Matlock Bath, I really do. And this really is on my doorstep. I'm in walking distance of Matlock Bath. You're very lucky to have this so close to home. And I know it gets busy, but it wouldn't be Matlock Bath if it didn't get busy. And that's part of its appeal. 
today is Wednesday. To so say you come here Sunday, it will be absolutely heaving. But I can understand why it's so popular. I can also see why some people call it Blackpool of the Peak District. OK, well, I'll just start making my way back to Cromford now. From the excellent Fish Pond pub, I walked up the path to reach the entrance to Gulliver's Kingdom, from where there was a stepped path climbing the steep hillside. Eventually, I emerged onto a lane at Upperwood. Bearing left at a fork, I followed a footpath which, after a while, led me past the entrance to a small cave. Goes quite back a long way. I won't be going back too far because I do get claustrophobic. I don't mind small caves if they don't go in too far, but it's, if they go back a long way and I can't see where I'm going, that's when I start to get a bit claustrophobic. So. <laughs> It's only a little cave, but it certainly appears to go back a long way, so... OK, well, I'm dropping back into Cromford now, so I'm just at the end of my walk. And yes, it was another wonderful walk. Not done this particular walk before, but I've done variations of this walk before, because, as I say, this is all on my doorstep, Cromford and Matlock Bath, lovely places. And now it's time for me to go home again, and I really have got such a short journey this time, so I've just got to drive back up the A6 through Matlock Bath, and then I literally am home then. Reaching my car then, I drove from Cromford and back along the A6 northwards through Matlock Bath. After about a mile or so, my short drive was over as I really was home this time. 